Welcome to week two. This week we're going to talk about using mail merge. When you perform a mail merge, you insert individualized information from a data source into a main document. This allows you to send personalized correspondence to numerous people very quickly. Let's look at this week's objectives and get started. Week two objectives. We're going to find data source, form document, and merge document. Create a data source, start mail merge, select recipients, insert mail merge fields into a document, preview the results, and then finally finish the merge. Defining data source. A data source is a table that contains information organized into columns, which are called fields, and rows, which are called records. There's going to be three types of data sources that we could create. We could create one using an Excel table, a Word table, or an Access table. I'm going to show you two of those threes during this video. First, I'm going to show you how to do an Excel table. So here's an Excel table. And so Excel is great for this. It's already had built-in rows and columns. You can see the columns A, B. And so title, first name, last name, anything going across this top row we call fields or the column headings. And then <clears throat> our records go across all of the other rows. So we could use Excel to create a data source, and then also we can create a data source using a word table. So here's a picture of a word table. Again, the difference is we'd have to insert the table, type in the fields. Very, very similar. So a form document is any Word document that contains fields from a data source. So form documents can be letters, invitations, advertisements, mailing labels, a phone directory. You get the idea. So here's the form document. And you can see that we have some merge fields already in there. We have an address block, a greeting line, and down below here, I have a first name field. And so when we take this form letter and we merge it into a new document, what happens is we get the actual individual name and address. So dear Mr. Lopez, and we have Jose as first name down here. And we can have hundreds of those. So here's another one that was merged, Aaron, and then a third one, Crystal. And so you can see how that all works. So let's jump into Microsoft Word, and I'll show you how to create a data source from a Word table. I'm going to start by showing you how to create a data source using a Microsoft Word table. So we go up to the Insert tab. We go to the Tables group. We're dropping down on Tables, and we're choosing Insert Table. Number of columns I want is 7. That's because I'm going to have seven fields in my data source. My number of rows, I'm going to have 15 records, and so I'm going to put 16. So I leave the top row for my column headings or my fields. We hit OK. We're ready to start typing our field names. I continue to hit tab, and I can now enter my first record, hitting tab. I could continue to add records. Let me just fill that in for us. So we see the complete table of information. Again, I have 15 records all filled in. And even though we're going to use Microsoft Word when we do our mail merge, when we're creating a data source, you have to save and close your data source. So the next step is we're going to save this. 
you choose a place where you want to save it. I'm going to browse. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. And I'm actually just going to create a new folder to place it in. I'm going to call this folder. And I'm going to call this folder data source. I'll name the file names and addresses. And I hit save. And again, if I was going to continue on here, I would definitely need to close this data source. So file, close. We've made our first data source. We've given it a name, we've saved, and we've closed it. Next, let me open up Microsoft Excel and show you how to create a data source using that. And Excel is what I'm going to ask you to use when you're doing your assignment this week. Okay, I have Excel open. You can see a partial Excel spreadsheet, but it's enough to share with you that an Excel spreadsheet looks exactly like a Word table. So you can see column A, column B going down, and then our rows go across. And so this is a perfect setup to create a data source to use for mail merge. I'm going to go ahead and just copy the same information and paste that we had in the Word one, so you don't have to watch me type. So I'm right-clicking, I'm going to paste, to sizing the columns by going between the column headings, double-clicking. Very technically, you don't even have to do this. What you have to do when you're creating a data source in Excel is to make sure that top row, row 1, contains your field, or we can also call them our column headings. And then every other row, without skipping rows, would be your records of information. Once you've done that, just like in Microsoft Word, we have to save and close this data source. If you've never been in Excel, you save files the same way you do as in Microsoft Word. So we're going to the File tab. We're choosing Save As. I'm going to Browse. I'm going to go back to my desktop. And I'm going to save it in that same folder, Data Source. And again, I'll just call this List of Addresses. I hit Save. We close it, and we go back and I have a partially created letter already typed out. Save us a little bit of time. And before I start the mail merge, I'd like to share with you how to insert a date as a field. The date field is not a merge field, but simply a field that will allow the date to update automatically every time we open up this form letter. So real world, we would never have to insert a date. It would always be on the current date. So to insert a date as a field, place your insertion point where you want the date. We're going to the Insert tab, going all the way over to the Text group. We're clicking on Date and Time, selecting the appropriate date format for a letter. And right above the OK key, you want to make sure you hit Update Automatically. That is the key to inserting it as a field, and we hit OK. If I mouse over it, you can see that uh, it's gray, meaning that it's a field. And if I saved this, closed it, opened it up tomorrow, it would have tomorrow's date. On to starting our mail merge. Up on our ribbon, we have a Mailings tab. And on the Mailings tab, the very first group, the Create group, just ignore that. That is not part of Mail Merge. So our Mail Merge starts with the Start Mail Merge group. And really pretty simple because this ribbon just steps us right through. So we have Start Mail Merge, Write Insert Field, then Preview, and then Finish. What I want you to notice is the majority of this ribbon is grayed out. So we can't do certain things until we do the right steps first. So Start Mail Merge, we drop down. We choose the type of mail merge we want, and we're doing a letter today. Again, everything is still grayed out. The next is Select Recipient. 
we're not typing a new excuse me we're not typing a new list we're using a list that we created so that's that data source so we hit use an existing list I would have to navigate back to where we saved it so I saved it in the data source folder we have both an Excel and a Word that we created since I'm going to ask you to use an Excel file when you're doing your assignment this week let's go ahead and use the list of addresses for Excel I click it and I hit open whether we're opening the Word file or the Excel file, they do not physically open, so we will not see it pop up. We hit Open. You pick the sheet. You hit OK. And what you will notice, you don't see that it's physically open, but you see that the commands that were grayed out now become visible. If I click on Edit Recipient List, you can see the list of names and addresses. We're going to actually talk about the recipient list more in our third week. So let me just close this. So we've started the mail merge. We've connected to our data source by selecting that Excel file. And so we're ready to put in our merge fields. So where it says right insert merge fields, we have something called the address block. The address block is going to give the name, city, state, zip, with the click of a button. When you're looking here where it says Joshua, Randall, in different various formats, that's just how we want to view our records. We have no record that is actual Joshua Randall. If we look over here, that's our first record, Mr. Jose Lopez, and what we're checking here is that we can see the address, the city, state, and zip. We hit OK. This is what the merge field looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter twice. And I'm now going to put the greeting line in, the dear Mr. or dear Josh, however I want that formatted. And we can do that, again, going up to our right and insert merge fields. We have a greeting line. Let's go up in here. We have deer. We can have two, or we don't have to have that format. And it says Mr. Randall. If I want to, I could have it more personalized by just using a first name. I'm going to keep it just the way it is. And then we have our punctuation. Comma is a little friendlier than the colon. And so I'm going to keep the when you see dear sir or madam, if you had somebody's address but you didn't know their name, you can have it addressed that way. We're ready to hit OK. And so we have the greeting line. I also want to share with you that we can insert individually any of the fields that were created in that data source. So if I drop down here, we have the title, the first name, etc. We can use those as often or as many times as we want within this letter or whatever form document we're choosing to create. So just to show you how that works, I'm going to revise this in close, and I'm going to put somebody's first name there, just give it a friendlier tone. So first name, when you're inserting, we've got to make sure that we have punctuation and spacing and all that stuff correct. So I'm going to lowercase the word enclosed. OK, so we have some merge fields in. If you wanted to highlight the merge fields, that just gives you a better idea where they exist in your document. You could do that. And so now our next step in our ribbon, preview the results. I hit preview the result, and it shares with us how it's going to actually look. So that's just one record. This is a great place to make sure that we do have the spacing correct, that um, everything is showing up well. You can go to the next record, and you can see it change. Again, this is not merge, this is just a preview. I'm going to remove the preview results. And so our final step is to finish and merge. So when I finish and merge, I'm actually taking the form document, that's what we see on the screen, our recipient list that's sort of behind the scenes, we're combining it into a new document, and we're going to edit individual documents. I'm going to choose all. You can see here we could just do one record, or if we had a couple hundred, we could say, hey, merge records 99 through 131. I'm hitting OK. This is on top of the form document. This is a new document, a new merge document. And if I scroll down, you have a section break, and you will see the next record. And I'm not going to scroll through the 15, but I think you get the idea. 
Let's say here we saw that we had an error. I can go to File. I can close it. I'm not going to save it. And I'm back to my form. I can make any correction I want. So if I decided I don't want the first name there now, I'm just going to delete it. Take and close. Really very easy to merge that again. And so another next set. Real world, we probably would not save this unless it was a legal document. I would make sure that I send it to the printer. Once it's printed, I would just go to File, Close, not save the changes. But if it's a form letter that I'm planning to use over and over, this is one that I would save. And then I could open it up and use it again and again by just changing the recipient list. There was a lot of information in this video this week, so you may need to watch it twice. Another thing to note, there are no more discussion board posts in this class, and so you can concentrate on just the concepts of advanced words. Okay, tips for a successful week. Do not procrastinate. Please log in each day, if not each day, every other day, even if you have your assignments done early. Please log in so you get recorded, attend it. Complete all the reading assignments. Watch the videos. Submit this week's assignment by Sunday. Please contact me. A phone call is the same as raising your hand in a classroom environment. So I'm looking forward to helping you through this week's assignment. Contact me and let me help you cross that finish line. Take care, everyone. Have a great week.